to this, and this is a Q&A video, which you all love and appreciate, I am sure, um, in which I answer your questions. If you have a question you would like me to answer, please send it to my mailbox here on YouTube, and I will answer any wrestling-related questions. Though I have been getting some MMA questions, and I will probably answer them, um, if you have any, when uh, I have enough to do a single video, or at some point in time. Um, so there is that, but um, if you have something to ask, send it to my mailbox. I ask that you keep it as short as possible, that way I can answer as many questions as I can, and also um, you know, try to make it as good as possible, and coherent, and all of that. Um, actually think it out, and you know, if you have to, use spell check or grammar check when you send the questions, please. Anyways, um, let's get on with the questions. Uh, quick question, what is the name of your theme song? It is called O Fortuna. Um, my original theme song, uh, Dan's Mother, uh, was I used because of various reasons, and it's also one of my favorite songs. But due to copyright issues, I stopped using it, and uh, I started using um, uh, Masawa's theme from uh, Noah, and uh, that was okay, and then I finally found this, which is one of my favorite theme songs. It's from a movie um, called Excalibur is when I first heard it, but it is a classical song, and um, it is, uh, which is one of my favorite movies. It's a, it's a King Arthur movie, Excalibur. Probably the best one ever made, in my opinion, and uh, very good. So, uh, there you go. Uh, what is your opinion on WWE bringing back the WWE Superstars TV show on Thursdays, which will compete with Impact? Do you think the show will succeed? I have no idea if it will succeed. Um, I'd have to see it first. But, um, you know, I'm not too... I don't know. It, it seems odd to me. I mean, I definitely think the WWE is too spread out as it is. I don't think they needed another hour of TV. But, um, yeah, that's just me. Uh, hey, Truth, just wanted to know what you <coughs> think makes a world title. Deserve the moniker World Title Championship. We all know the company's world title is used to show the importance and uh, treatment of their main belt. But what do you <coughs> think separates the princes from the poppers in pro wrestling championships? In my opinion, I believe a title only deserves to be a world championship if its lineage can be tried back to the NWA. World Heavyweight Championship, that's just my two cents, what's yours? <clears throat> um, not to get too geeky about it, but um, to me, my thing is, if the title is continuously, um, on a regular basis, basis uh, defended around the world, I don't put a lot of stock in the whole World Championship thing. Um, I, I, you know, To me, that goes a little bit overboard, because there's a lot of titles that aren't considered world titles that I would say are some of the most important titles in pro wrestling. Uh, the IWGP heavyweight title being one of them. Um, I think, you know, that's, that's arguably one of the most important titles in all of pro wrestling, and it's not considered a world title. So I, I think that uh, you have all of that sort of thing. So it, it's not a big deal to me. Um, but as I said, if you want to get technical, I would say any title that is regular on a regular basis defended around uh, the world, or at least on some other continents other than, you know, the North America. Um, if you could recommend one show to get from Chikara, what would you choose? I'm not sure of one show, because, like, um, I love the Trios Tournament, which, of course, is not one show. Um, and I also, the other shows that <coughs> I always like and I think that people would get a kick of is the Cybernetico shows. Um, as, uh, but, uh, you know, like I, like I said before, Chikara is very, it's one of those things that's hard to recommend to people, because... Um, it depends on what you like, what you don't like, that sort of thing. So, there you go. Hello, Truth. Long time viewer, but I have to ask this. Since watching ROH back in late 2006, I was thinking about their titles, namely their world title. It seems whomever has the title keeps for keeps it for a long while. Not that I have a problem with it, but sometimes if you look at Nigel right now, he really has no one to drop the title to because of has he beat almost everyone. Um, what what are your thoughts in regards to the length of their ti world ti of their world title reigns? Thanks in advance. Um, it's one thing that I think does make Ring of Honor <coughs> different <coughs> from a lot of places because they do have very lengthy title reigns. Their world cha their champions look to see um, look to 
hold their titles for a fairly long time, and I think it does add a little bit of prestige and makes the guys look better, makes the makes the belt look better. Um, so that is kind of my thoughts on it. I I, I think it works. Um, though you know, I mean, you can't keep a, a belt on a guy too long, but I do think it works for them. Personally, for you, who do you think is the better overall wrestler, or who do you enjoy more? Uh, Kenta or Moro Fuji is who he's asking for. I guess I forgot to put it in the thing. Um, uh, I would say Moro Fuji myself. I like Kenta, but I think Moro Fuji just has, can work better with more uh, people. So I would say Moro Fuji. With Austin now inducted into the Hall of Fame, who do you see will also be inducted this year? Uh, I believe they've already announced uh, Bill Watts. Um, the Funks, I believe, are probably going to go in as a family maybe. And um, so that'll be interesting. Um, I would imagine the Von Erichs will probably go in. I imagine Paul Bosch will probably go in. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, I don't. I don't think Ted DiBiase is in yet. And if he was going to go in, I would imagine uh, it would be this year. It would probably be a year for him to go into. Um, and probably, I, you know, I also wouldn't be surprised if they induct. <coughs> um, a uh, luchador of some sort. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Mel Maskers or someone like that was inducted um, if they could get him to show up. I, that wouldn't surprise me either just because it is in Houston. So there you go with that. Um, in your opinion, why does the WWE post news about other competi about their competition on their homepage for WWE? Uh, the reason why they do that is because they were they do it to try to increase the number of views for their web page because they get money from it. That's why they do it. Um, I've never actually understood this, but I'm starting to. But why do you have an intense hatred for Triple H? And is there any good quality you see in him? There are lots of good qualities I see him. It's not so much I have a hatred for Triple H as much as I don't like the way he's used, I guess would be the way, and the fact that he, you know, he purposely, I shouldn't say purposely, but I do feel that he purposely doesn't make guys look good, and that guys very seldom look good when they are in the ring with him, and are made to look good in the ring with him, and to me that just hurts the company in the long run, because you have a lot of these young guys who need to be made to look good, and aren't look good, um, you know, as the saying goes, he buries a lot of people, and um, that is my big problem. And I'm a, I have a big problem with just about everyone that does that. I have no problem him going over everybody, but he could at least make guys look good. This, the way he made guys, I mean, he made guys look good in the Royal Rumble, and I believe I pointed that out in the Royal Rumble. He took a lot of guys' moves. He took a lot of guys' finishers. That's what I would like to see more of. Um, whenever he's been asked about it, he's always said he just does what creative tells him to do. You know, there, there's two sides to that. He has enough power to where he should be able to say, eh, you know, I need to make this guy look good. Because, you know, Ric Flair isn't seen as the best because of how many titles he won. He's seen as the best because of how many guys he made look good in the ring. And because he made guys look good in the ring, he had a bunch of great matches. And that's kind of there. Uh, True Star, I was wondering what wrestlers in our age do you think would do well in the WWE in terms of the way they work in size? Um, let's see. Here, uh, Brent Albright, of course. <clears throat> I would say um, Eric Stevens. Um, uh, Steen, <clears throat> uh, Claudio Castagnoli, um, of course, uh, uh, Nigel McGuinness. I, I would say uh, Brian Danielson as well, to a degree. I think if used properly. Um, you know, I think all those guys would be very good in the WWE and <clears throat> and with the way they work and everything. So, there you go. Uh, what are your overall thoughts of JBL in the ring, on the mic, and as a world champion? Uh, I've always been a big JBL fan <clears throat> since back in the uh, Justin Hawk Bradshaw days because I love the fact that he did look like a ripoff of Stan Hansen. And he acted like Stan Hansen. He had Stan Hansen down perfect. And I hope that if Stan Hansen is ever put into the Hall of Fame, that JBL is the guy to do it. Um, I would be shocked if that would ever became the case, but um, for various reasons. But uh, that that would be completely awesome, and um, you know, all of that. Um, I think he's very good on the mic, as has been proven during the Shawn Michaels stuff. Um, in the ring, um, I think at one point he was really good. 
and then I think uh, once he got the JBL gimmick, I, I think at that point you could tell that he was deteriorating to some degree and just wasn't as good as uh, probably would have could have was at some point. And uh, I thought he made a, a pretty good world champion in that um, people hated him. And um, I think that uh, people wanted to see him lose, and I think that was a good, good thing. So there you go. Hey, Trusar, I wanted to know what your thoughts on Mr. Kennedy overall. How far do you think he can go, and do you think he can ever be as over as Edge or Cena? Um, my thing with Kennedy is he's only going to go as far as, you know, he doesn't screw up, which has been one of the problems, and... Um, if he can stop getting hurt all the time, that would be the other problem. I, I, I think he has good mic skills. I think he's good in the ring. I think he could be very, very good. But, um, you know, it takes a lot. Of, it, it's going to take him taking care of a lot of outside things for that to happen. So there you go. Uh, do you think William Regal is a good fit for ROH? I think or William Regal would be awesome in Ring of Honor. So there you go. Do you think that Nigel McGuinness will break Samoa Joe's record for the longest reigning ROH champion, and who do you think, and do you think he should? I don't think he should. I don't think he will. Um, I think that, uh, though he might, just to piss off the fans, um, and to make him even over more as a heel, but um, I wouldn't be shocked if he gets really close and then someone beats him for the title. So um, that wouldn't surprise me. But um, no, I don't think he should. I, I think that should be kind of Joe's legacy in the Ring of Honor. That's just kind of the way I look at it. Uh, with the success of Brock Lesnar has seen in the UFC, do you think we will be seeing more professional wrestlers jumping over to MMA in the near future? I don't know about guys that are currently uh, pro wrestlers, <coughs> but I do think, because um, you've already seen this, you've seen a lot of guys that would probably have gone into pro wrestling um, are going into MMA instead. So I definitely think they're losing guys that way. I wouldn't say necessarily guys that are already into pro wrestling. So... There you go. Hey, True Slayer, do you think WWE pay-per-views are overpriced? I spent $40 recently on Survivor Series, and it was awful. Do you think they should drop the price or make some free? Um, I definitely think they put on too many pay-per-views. I would definitely love to see them get rid of... Um, I Go, you know, to maybe 12 pay-per-views a year. Um, actually, in my opinion, I think they should do 10 pay-per-views a year and then do two uh, Saturday Night's Main Events and make those, you know, two-hour pay-per-view quality shows. That's just me. Um, <clears throat> but, um, you know, are they overpriced? Hey, if people are still willing to pay $40 or however much money for, uh, the pay-per-views, then I wouldn't exactly call them, then they're not overpriced because people are still willing to pay for them, so there you go. Uh, what's, what's your favorite finisher or signature of all time? Um, if multiple people use it, whose delivery is your favorite? My favorite is the Mutaplex, or I believe it's actually an inverted... Um, STF. Um, that is my favorite, um, and the first person I ever saw use it was the great Muda, who I'm a huge mark for, and I love that move. I, I think it's an awesome move, and I wish more people would use it, so there you go. Uh, do you think the WWE's current tag team landscape should still have two sets of tag titles, or should both sets be unified into one set for, for the better? Yes, I do. I, I think that actually they should just put the tag team division on one show to be honest, because, uh, you know, I, I think it would much, much, it would work much better that way, in my opinion. Um, hey, True Slayer, in one of your videos you mentioned that you do not usually recommend ROH Best of DVDs. Is there any particular reason for this? Because I follow ROH, but do not have a huge number of their DVDs, but as a fan of the guys like Punk and Joe, I wondered if their best uh, DVDs are any good. Um... I don't like the Ring of Honor Best of DVDs because to me they don't have they have the stuff that is on the DVDs is stuff that really you should probably get the shows anyways anyways because they're awesome shows um, that are on their Best of DVDs the stuff that's not on the awesome shows that um, are awesome matches but they're pretty much the only match you'd probably want to see on that DVD most of them aren't on the best of DVDs, and that's the problem. That's why I don't like them. Now, the, the Koch DVDs, that's a totally different subject, and I would recommend getting those because those are awesome. But um, as far as the regular Ring of Honor best of DVDs, that's why I, I think you're better off getting the actual shows that the matches are on um, than the best of DVDs. 
unless you can get them for really cheap. You know, if you can get them for like five bucks or so, then they'd be worth it. But um, nah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of Ringwater's Best of DVDs. Let's see. Um, what ECW documentary do you prefer, The Rise and Fall of ECW or Forever Hardcore? I've said this before, I like The Rise and Fall of ECW better. I think it is a more honest look. I think Forever Hardcore, while it's still very good, um, there's some stuff in there that yeah, I just am like, blah. Um, because they, they, they don't, and especially in that DVD where it would be much easier for them to do it, they do a worse job, in my opinion, of uh, questioning some of what the guys are saying where I think even in the rise and fall of ECW, I think they do a better job of questioning what a lot of guys, even the ECW guys, are kind of saying. So there is that. <coughs> uh, what do you think of the possibility of TNA supposedly bringing a pay-per-view here to the UK? Do you think it would be a good thing, and do you think the WWE should also bring one over? Um, for those of you that don't know about this, apparently while TNA was in the UK, they to, they talked about bringing a pay-per-view to the UK. Um, I think that's a bad idea, and here's why. Not, and some people will say, well, they're not getting good buy rates anyways. But um, the thing about it is that if you do a pay-per-view in the UK, it's going to be tape delayed. And even, you know, the SummerSlam that was in... Uh, the UK, which is a great and wonderful SummerSlam, got a horrible buy rate because it was tape delayed, and people knew it was tape delayed, and so it, it didn't get a very good buy rate at all. Um, it wasn't a live event, and so people didn't pay for it. Um, so I, I would, and you know, and even UFC uh, tape delayed pay per views, which pay per view, which would be tape delayed about the same amount as a TNA pay per view would be over there. Um, they do not. They do pretty crappy for UFC uh, buy rates. So I doubt they would want to do that now. Um, and same thing with WWE. That's why WWE doesn't do pay per views. That's why when they were doing pay per views in the UK, they were doing UK exclusive pay per views, and then they would sell the DVDs, so um, or the tapes in the US. But um, yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. I do think that TNA should probably do. Uh, impact tapings over there. I think that would be a good thing. Um, especially since they do, they they uh, seem to draw much, much better in the UK, so it would make them look like a bigger deal, but that's just kind of my take. In an interview in 2003, Ted DiBiase, one of the most famous heels from his time period, that a good heel can go out and get beat every night, but as long as he can maintain his heat, then that is good enough or something to that effect. Do you agree with that statement? Yeah, I think if, if you know, a, a, a heel doesn't necessarily have to win because a great heel the fans want to see get beat. And even if he gets beat all the time, um, if as long as he can go out there and people still want to see him get beat, um, there, there's nothing wrong with it. Now, at some point, you know, he can't go out every, every night. At some point, he is going to have to win something. But um, for the most part, he can be complete. He can lose a lot, and as long as he's able to go out there and make people want to see him get beat, such as, I don't know, Honky Tonk Man was great at that. Of course, he didn't lose forever, so that was one of the reasons, but um, I think after that big long run, I think he could have lost for who knows how long, and no one would have cared, because it was Honky getting beat, and that's what they wanted to see, so there you go. Um, some people are, comp are complaining <coughs> that the legacy was buried by Shane at the end of Raw. Uh, what are your thoughts? I think that is a very, I wouldn't say buried, but good God did the ending of Raw suck. That was complete horseshit. Um, I don't know who thought that up. I don't know whose idea that was, but that was crap. That was some of, that was one of the, that will pro, I don't know. That was bad. That was just, I couldn't believe what I was watching. I was just like, holy shit, this sucks. That was, that was, that was one of the worst things I have ever seen in I don't know how long. Of course, it might be eclipsed tomorrow by, um, by Impact, because Impact looks, wow, Impact looks, Impact is, as I said in my last video, Impact is either going to be one of the funniest shows of all time, it's going to be either three things, one of the funniest shows of all time, one of the funniest shows of all time because of the absolute horridness of it, and, and how bad it is, and you just have to laugh at it and go, dear God, this is the worst attempt of, pro, of anyone putting on a pro wrestling show ever, or it's going to be so offensive that no one's even going to want to care about it. That, that's 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 gonna be the way it kind of goes, I would say. 
but um, I guess what are you going to do? Um, but uh, yeah, it was complete crap. Um, I don't understand why they did that. They took you know Orton, who definitely had been built up and looked like was going to become an uber star um, off of this angle, and basically just ruined it with shit, which I don't get. I don't get why would you? <coughs> and it was and it was good. Everything was good up until the point where. Shane came up and started beating up three guys. Shane McMahon, who's not a pro wrestler. I mean, he's wrestled, but are you, you basically just said that Shane McMahon is the best wrestler in your organization. What type of crap is that? I mean, come on. You need to keep at least some what of the illusion of pro wrestling active. Whatever. But anyways, um, that is all. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow. Like I said, I am going to do a TNA Impact. I know the TNA... A review. I know the TNA fans are probably hating me for it, but hey, if, if the show is actually funny and entertaining, I will say so. Even if it's funny and entertaining in a bad way, I will say so. Um, because this show, I have to see the show. I have to see the show and I have to review it after I read the spoilers because it looks just so downright just, ah, God, I can't believe they're doing what they're doing. But anyways, um, with that, I am out. Have a good one. Later.